again. I can remind you because I'm super cat. Remind me. Hint. It's right behind you. <gasps> I'm Douglas. No, that's your dog. Okay. I'm and this is your family. And this is your website. Monkey.com. M-U-C-K-E-Y. Dot com. So, Ta -da! today we're going to talk about reversing vowels. And we're going to talk about how they work, their pluses and minuses. Pluses and minuses? Maybe. Okay. So, are we ready to go? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. So, there's a fabulous place that you can go. And that is M-U-C-K-E-Y dot com. So, we're going to come over here to monkey.com and you can see my family. You're going to come over Beautiful here and you family. can see tech services. T-E-C services. Okay, from tech services, we got all kinds of fun stuff you can go through here. But we're going to click on this one called training data. Training data. And there's another magical place that comes up, Dan Foss Learning. You can go to this first one and go through a whole series of classes and get certificates and all that kind of fun stuff. But we're gonna Does one need to do that if they're going to get into this kind of world? Knowledge is power. Agreed. And the more power you have, the more value you bring. And the more money you make. Say no more, I agree. Okay. Wholeheartedly. So, we're going to click on this one called Refrigeration Animation Dan Voss. Clicking. Then we're going to come to this other magical site called Dan Voss. Then we have this Dan Voss Sagano Maya. Done well, fine, it's worked for you. Four way reversing vowels. <laughs> Whoop! You want me to click on that? Let's click on that. Okay, STF. That's the bottom. Now we have a complete animation on reversing vowels. Now reversing vowels come in various shapes and sizes. Okay? And you'll notice that we have one port standing by itself right here. Okay? That is the discharge from the compressor, the bottom one, in the middle, okay, upside down. That one is the suction port always, so this is always a discharge, this is always a suction. We start at the compressor where the compressor has two functions. Raise the pressure to raise the temperature so that it's higher than ambient, so I can reject that heat to the ambient air or ambient space. And it also moves volume. The more volume I move, the more capacity I get out of the system, or the more heating or cooling I can do for my home, or my building, or whatever it is I'm trying to do. Now, these are used on heat pump. The intent of a heat pump is I have one unit, doesn't need gas, and I can do both heating and cooling electrically. Now, in order to do this, we're currently in the heating cycle. So coming out of here is a high temp, superheated gas into this main port here. And because the solenoid on my reversing valve right here is energized in this case, and some are energizing heat and some are de-energizing heat, so it depends on the manufacturer. I'm going to put pressure to here, pressure through here, push pressure against this, reduce the pressure on this side by venting that pressure to the suction side, which is going to cause that reversing valve to move. Okay? Higher pressure on this side, lower pressure on this side causes it to move. Now, as it comes through here from the compressor, superheated gas, most amount of heat in the entire system, energy in the system, comes to the indoor coil where I need to do heating. This heat energy is now released into the air, which is going to go into the space, comes into here, and turns it into a saturated, high temperature, liquid gas mixture. can come out of here as a... Ooh, I yes. A high ten sub cooled liquid? Yes! <laughs> yes. I mean. High temp is a relative term. It's probably about 100 to 125 degrees or so, depending on the unit, or maybe higher depending on your problem. Good heads up. And it comes through some sort of metering device, and it's going to go through what we call the adiabatic process. Okay, adiabatic, where it gets a change in pressure, causes a change in temperature without adding or removing any energy from the system. I'm going to come in here potentially as a subcooled liquid, okay, which means it's below saturation. I've gotten all the vapor out of it, and I've got it colder than just the liquid, and I've 
taken a little bit more energy away from it after I've gotten rid of all of the bubbles of gas. Comes to the outdoor coil as a saturated vapor liquid. Now the air coming across this will take and warm this up so that we can turn it back into a vapor so that we don't damage the compressor. Because the compressor with liquid back in it will destroy it because the compressor engine will go through the roof and destroy the compressor because liquid is not compressible. And this is a compressor. Okay? Gonna come through here as a superheated gas and back to my compressor. The next stop, we're gonna go cooling mode. So you can just click on this little animation link. Clicking. Now, switch. Solenoid is now de energized. Now we've switched the ports. We've now made this one low pressure. The low pressure is coming through here to the suction to lower the pressure here. And the high pressure is coming from here through this valve to here to push this back. Now we get this effect. Ooh, so during the entire cooling cycle, the coil will not be energized? But in this particular case, it will not be energized. Okay. Now, could manufacturers switch this around where it's energized in heat or de-energizing heat? Yes, they can. Sure so. It's my option because I can do anything I want. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. So now, we're taking the hot gas coming through here. Now we're going through the reversing valve, a high superheated gas, the outer coil. We're going to take that high superheated gas, turn it into a sub-cooled sub liquid. Okay. Going to come through the metering device where I do this thing called the adiobatic process, where I change it from a high temp, high pressure, again, high temp's a relative term, to um, a low temp, low pressure, liquid gas saturated, comes through here, it's going to go to the indoor coil, which now I want to cool the space down, so it's going to pick up heat from the system, come through, come through as a super heat gas, and back to the compressor. So, we've gone through this entire cycle of heating and cooling, and I think it's time to welcome back, Cat! Dun, so, dun, 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 okay. She's got a lot of energy, a lot of energy. So, what did we learn? We've learned what a reversing valve does. Yeah, and we learned that, yeah, it can look like this, but could it look like this? Yes, it could. Bigger, smaller, depending on the application. Size does not matter, unless the application okay. says so. Okay, alright. So, we learned that this is the discharge line, this is going to be the suction line, and one of these is going to go to the indoor and outdoor coil, and all we're doing is moving this back and forth. With pressure. Yes. And we learned that we no longer have an evaporator and condenser. We have that outdoor coil and indoor coil. Okay? It's like magic. Now, could I do more magic? Yes, you can. And where's the place to find magic? At El Camino College? Yes. Knowledge is power. Kat is a welder. She's now into HVAC. She's one smart person. So. Thanks, El Camino. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Okay. So, any last words? I don't hear that. I don't hear the birds anymore. Did you scare them away? I think I did. All right, so <laughs> we, this is we're coexisting. That's what's happening here. Oh, coexistence. That's cool. Now coexistence is key. Live long and prosper. And peace. Be with you and yours. So we're all good. We're all good. You're not gonna punish me. I learned a lot. I shall not. Okay. Only if you say you can't, and then I shall make you do push-ups. We never say can't. Ever. 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 So this is Tim and, and Kat, Super Kat saying never say never and never say can. Truth. We're out of here. Peace out. <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs>